What's up, guys, and welcome to Movie and Points Flashback Reviews, where I take movies from the past, break them down, and tell you what I think about them. If you like what you see, of course, hit the subscribe button, join Movie and Point, hit that notification bell at the top to find out what's coming next, and of course, comment below on any video that you watch on my channel. So, you know something I completely forgot? That this movie's 30 years old officially this week. Uh, I was originally going to do something else for this week for my flashback review, but The Little Mermaid is a truly special film, and I have to talk about it. It's a film that jump started a whole renaissance of Disney movies for like 10 years, and is a movie that nobody thought would make any money. You know, Disney had been in this black period, you know, for about 10 years itself. They were almost bankrupt, they almost went under. And it's amazing to think that this movie is kind of a lightning in a bottle effect where it's a movie that people put passion and heart into, but you don't know what it's gonna do. You don't know this movie's gonna lead into 10 years of stuff like Beauty and the Beast, The Lion King, Aladdin. It's just pretty crazy to think about. And then you got Ron Clements, John Musker, and Howard Ashman involved in this project who are, you know, animators that have a lot of passion. And you just got a great film. It's just, it's an insane thing to think about. And this movie is a classic tale. You know, it's a tale about a girl who dreams of something bigger, dreams of a different, you know, world and so on and so forth. And her father won't let her have it. So she does the stupid thing. She, you know, trades her what her most prolific thing is. And she finds her prince at the end of the story. So it's a, actually a traditional Disney film. It's a traditional fairy tale story, I guess you could say. And I cannot not tell you how much I love this film because this film is amazing. Um, the basic storyline is we have Ariel who she, like I said, she dreams of, a, you know, the a surface level. She dreams of, you know, going off on her own. She's a dreamer. She's has a magical voice, but her father is so overbearing that it just, she, he just keeps her down. It's only, I don't want to say he's almost abusive, but he's very strong willed and he's very protective of his daughters. And, you know, she carries trinkets and so on and so forth at the surface level. And she learns, sees this guy named Eric and Eric is this handsome prince as they usually are in these movies. And she wants to find out more about him, but because of certain circumstances, her father finds out that she has been to the surface level, bans her, and then she ends up going to this evil sea witch called Ursula. And Ursula offers her the ability to go to the surface to meet her prince, but she has to trade in her voice, which is her marquee thing. And she says by a certain time at sunset that if she can get Prince Eric to fall in love with him, that she will get her voice back and she will, you know, be forever with him. But because Ursula has other plans to take over the kingdom under sea and so on and so forth, she's not going to let that happen. And so, you know, you know how the story's going to play out. She starts to, uh, you know, romantically fall in love with Eric, who romantically falls in love with her. And there's that whole scene at the very end where they do fall in love and they have to fight Ursula and so on and so forth. Now, in essence, this movie could not work if it wasn't for the voice cast and it wasn't for the animation. It wasn't for the very Disney feel to the movie because the Hans Christian Andersen story was a little darker, a lot darker than this movie. But the voice cast alone just is so perfect. Jodie Benson as Ariel is fantastic. She just embodies this character, embodies this young woman who just really wants something more. Her voice, her singing, is just so mesmerizing to watch, so cathartic, so beautiful. When she loses her voice, you know, when the animators take over and kind of do the motions with Ariel, it's just beautiful to watch. And there's just so many great moments with Ariel, you know, with her just in her cave, you know, saying part of your world where she dreams of, you know, a bigger place and wanting to go to the surface. It's just a mesmerizing moment. The animation is beautiful. Her singing is beautiful. And it's just perfect. And she just does such a great job with, you know, the, the amount of screen time that, you know, her voice has because it actually goes away for a while. But Jodie Penson is a true standout, a true genius at what she's doing. And then you have Samuel E. Wright, who's playing Sebastian. He is the guy that is the kind of second-hand, right-hand man to uh, King Triton. And he is doing everything to protect Ariel. He is the guy that, you know, is very against what she's doing, but somehow is protecting her, so he has to go along with it. And Under the Sea is one of my favorite songs of all time, just of how, you know, how catchy it is, how well Samuel E. Wright is singing it, just... The beautiful nature of all the fish and how it groups together and how he's trying to show her that being under the sea is a much better place than being 
in the you know in the surface area and then he has like his moments where he spills the king triton that she's been to the surface to the boat save prince eric and so on and so forth and he's just like he's almost like a sympathetic character but he has like he has this like a stick up his butt because he doesn't know what he wants to do and then he finds he faces off with this uh, butcher who is trying to basically eat him like you know kill him and eat him and it's just a fun little looney tune style moment you know at the very end when he claws the uh, rope and hits the guy in the face and stuff like that and that's what i love about sebastian he's just he's such a fun character such a beautiful character and he just does so much Sammy Wright right was does so much with his uh his motions and the way he speaks and stuff like that then you have people like buddy hackett who plays scuttle who can you know, he's like the goofy character that, you know, Ariel always goes to when she finds new trinkets. And his names for his stuff that he comes up with, you know, like Dinglehopper for the, the fork and Snarf Laugh for the, the smoking pipe. It's just, the character is so much fun. He's weird. He's off you know, off the wall. He's not very smart, but he's just, he's that type of character that's a lot of comic relief and so on and so forth, you know. You know, Jason Marin plays Flounder, and Flounder's this uh, fish who's kind of like the sidekick to Ariel, and he's scared, he's a wimp, but he, like, gains his courage throughout the film, and he's just so much fun to just be a hang around, you know, when they get involved with the shark at the very beginning of the movie, he's just, like, scared and, you know, running all over the place, and he almost gets uh, Ariel killed and eaten, but... You know, you kind of forgive him because he's just so simple in his character, but he's so much fun. He has so much great moments. And, you know, Jason Marin just, he does a nice job with the character. But the one true standout, the one of my favorite villains is Ursula. And Ursula is played by Pat Carroll. There's not a more delicious villain in, I've ever seen in my entire life. And I'm, what I mean by delicious is a villain that is so over the top and insane and crazy, but so much fun to watch. You know, there's a song in this movie called Poor Unfortunate Souls, and you really get a sense of just how menacing and like conniving and just evil Ursula is because she is going to give Ariel what she wants, but she wants something in process, which is her voice because she's going to use that against her. And just to see the menace, just to see the fact of her eels who are flotsam and jetsam, which is kind of kind of cool if you think about it because of those names. And just to see her just like under the shadows, she's, you know, banned from, you know, the kingdom of Atlantis or Atlantia or whatever it's called. And just to see her revenge, to see her get up one up on King Triton, to see her, you know, basically try to take down uh, Ariel and Eric, to just take over the seas. She is just, oh man, it's just beautiful to see her, you know, motions, you know, because she, she's an um, uh, octopus type character. And she, the way she flows, the way the animators just move her around the sea. It's just, it's such a creepy, but such a beautiful thing to watch. And I just love what Pat Carroll did here in this, in this role. It's a fantastic just villain. And it goes into the pantheon of great, great villains in history in Disney. Just in general, you know, she's dark, she's evil, but she has a sexiness to her, I guess you could say. In a way, just a burlesque style uh, feel to her, I guess you could say. But it's just so good. I just I love everything about it. And the one thing that I don't I don't give enough praise to is just how good the animation is in this movie. You can feel the old school Disney animation from like the 40s and 50s with the background characters, with the way the fish move, the way everything just works. You can really tell that the animators really studied the real life characters, like the animated um, real life fish and stuff like that. And they had just, you can tell the, like the emotions and the emotives and stuff like that. You can see them, you can almost feel like a animators looking at themselves in the mirror, kind of getting an idea and how crabs move and stuff like that. It's just, it's an impressive thing. You know, even in the dark times, there was always impressive things about what Disney could do as animation department. You know, you know, you can really just feel how like being under the water with like the when creatures move around the bubbles they actually have to do individual bubbles which spray everywhere and then you know jeffrey katzenberg who was involved with disney at this time you can really feel his influence because he's really good at getting things done and getting it done properly but just like when you really kind of just break it down and how pretty it is how good ariel looks how good you know prince eric looks how look how good Ursula, King Triton, you know, just all these characters, you really just get a great sense of what Disney is known for and why Disney is just 
such an amazing studio and you know and talking to you know a couple animators who worked on this movie you just really get a great sense that this movie just was something special was something that was just you know a lightning in a bottle effect and the music by you know disney composer alan minkin is just all the songs from like fathoms below to under the sea to part of your world to four unfortunate souls to kiss the girl they're just all classic disney songs and you know al minkin and his creative team of you know composers and you know musical artists they just did such a nice job and it started a revolution of just great songs and of, of songs that are very great earworms and it just it's a great film it's just a great you know time at the theater it's only 89 minutes or whatever it is but you really feel like you're in this world and it just it's an impressive feat for what disney was doing at the time and it still does to this day you know they do hit their rough patches but they do find some way to create magic and within that 10 year period starting with little mermaid they really hit it out of the park so you know, if you haven't seen The Little Mermaid, please watch it because it's still an impressive film. I just watched it and I am still just loving it since the day I first saw it. So, so yeah, that's it. That's my take on The Little Mermaid. Wow, happy 30th anniversary, you know. Uh, pretty crazy that this movie came out 30 years ago, but you know what? Awesome. It's still great today. So, anyways, comment below. Uh, tell me what you think of this film. Uh, you know, comment below and also on any video that you watch. Subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell at the top to find out what's coming next. But anyways, we'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out. What's up, guys? Thank you so much for checking out Movie Emporium. I really appreciate it. If you want to, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification button and the bell at the top. Find out what's coming next for Movie Emporium. Also, check out these two videos. They're amazing. I think they're awesome. I think you'll enjoy them, too. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.